In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the novellas that fall between Radiance and Eidolon in the Wraith King series. One is scary and one is spicy. Hi, I'm Bee and welcome to my channel, Mama Needs to Read Romance, because nobody in these novellas is going to sprinkle their snacks all over the bottom of my van. Of course, nobody in these books has a van, but that's beyond the point. I recently read Radiance and man did I love it. I decided that by the end of 2022 I was going to read the rest of the series and the next books after Radiance are actually two novellas. One is Lover of Thorns and Holy Gods which is actually a compilation of three short stories that follow different worlds in Grace Draven's series and the last one called A Matter of Trust follows Brishin and Ildico in their next fabulous adventure. And the other is a novella. It's roughly like 114 pages, I think. And it is a scary story called Night Tide, which is part of the kingdom of the Wraith Kings. It's in Prisid, but there's no characters from Radiance found in this short story. Let's talk about Lover of Thorns and Holy Gods. Uh, so in my Radiance review, I said something about how I appreciated the fact that Grace Draven was able to do beautiful love scenes without giving me an anatomy lesson. Well, I feel like Grace Draven heard me and said, I got your anatomy lesson right here. And whoa, okay. So this short story, A Matter of Trust, which is within this book, is basically centered around them trying something new. And I was very surprised. It starts out with them at a dinner and all these ladies are talking and they are talking about certain things and they really want Ildico to give them the goods. Like, what is Brishin like? You know, cause they don't know. Most of them have only other, ever been with human men. So they're trying to pump her from information and she's not willing to share. But some of the things they're saying, she gets her wondering like, well, what should I do this or that? I'm not gonna go too much into it because you don't want me to do that. <laughs> you can read it for yourself. It's very short. You could read it in one sitting, I'm sure. But yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I would say for anyone that feels like they wish there was more love scenes in Radiance and they want to see Brishin and Ildiko very happy and just expressing their love for one another in a new way, then I highly recommend this to you, so. I, I say it's required reading if you're gonna read all the Wraith Kings, especially if you just read Night Tide, cause man, is it like the complete opposite. So you get two very different worlds. This actually was a tremendous scary story. We are on the coast of Prisid. It's like a sleepy fishing village. Zagana is the main character. Her husband passed away, so she moved in with her parents, Odin and Frishy, and she has a horse named Gitta. She and Gitta have a really strong connection. For their livelihood, Gitta and her father, Odin, troll shallower waters for shrimp every day. Odin and Zagana both have a gift where they can put their hands in the water and she can actually see things that are happening or have happened in the water. Her father Odin doesn't have quite as strong a gift. Why is this gift important? Because there is something terrifying in the deeper waters of their shores and it's coming out at night. It is like part spider, part human, I mean, in the way it looks, and it feeds off of shame and sadness. It was really deep, just beautifully written, even though it was terrifying. This thing has like a dirge. It makes noise and like scary, creepy sounds, but what it does to bring people out so that it can eat them is it, it like sings to them, but it's like in their soul, like it makes them feel all the sad or depressed or shameful feelings that have just made them feel badly in the past. It makes them want to drown themselves in the water. So they go into the ocean and it eats them. And it's terrifying. This thing walks on the water, but it lives like in the depths of the water. Now there's some other things going on too. We find out that Zagana's father is not actually Odin. Her father is actually the Lord of the area. She's the love child of Frishy and the local Lord. The Lord had another daughter in their castle and Zagana grew up with this 
girl named Jolyn. And Jolyn's kind of selfish, kind of a brat, but she used to let Zagana come and play with her and they would play on the beach together sometimes, but Zagana was never part of the royal world and it didn't bother Zagana at all. Jolyn later got married and moved away, but now Jolyn is back and she's brought her husband Andres and their daughter Tunde. Andres and Jolyn seem to hate one another. I mean, Andres seems like he's trying, but Z but Jolyn hates his guts. And to make matters more complicated, Zagana is experiencing feelings for Andres and she's keeping him at arm's length, but you can tell there's something going on between the two of them. But he is married to her half sister, so it's complicated. In any case, people in the village start disappearing and Zagana, with her water gift, she can put her hands in the ocean, she figures out what's going on. They have to decide as a village what they're going to do about this thing. And Andres steps in to help, but Zagana does not want to feel feelings for him. So she's got to fight it. I don't want to give anything more away. I highly recommend if you want a, a little bit of scare and you want to visit the Wraith King's world again, Grace Draven says at the very end, Andres, Zagana, and the fearless Gitta, the horse, will be principal characters in the Wraith King's book number five entitled The Pariahs King. I'm really excited to read this. This has not even been published yet. Now I'm going to be ready for Eidolon. And I think I'm pronouncing that correctly at this point. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying whatever you're reading. Thanks so much. Take care and bye.